when I first started, I had no idea that the business that it would go on for so long. I had no idea that it would become a career. I've, I've had to learn how to become a businessman. But first of all, I just play music. Jungle, drum and bass in my heart. I've made a lot of mistakes along the way. And I've learned a lot and I'm still learning now. But, um, I think I've done quite well out of it, do you know what I mean? Considering, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think personally, I think I was passionate about music from the time I was born. It's just something that's always been in me. I've always had that, that love and that passion for music and it's, it's lived with me all the way through my life, you know what I mean? Oh. Dub was my first love. Just Shaka was my first love. And then from there, I started getting into like dancehall stuff. Then I started getting into funk. Then I started going out to Soul to Soul, hear Jazzy B and those boys. And I was, and I was into that heavily for a long time. My first experiences of the Acid House was going to Clink Street. I remember the first time I was like, whoa, this is crazy. And I went back again and it just grabbed me, I just got it. Do you know what I'm saying? It just, I just got it and you know what I mean? And from there, I just you know, I was addicted to it. Do you know what I'm saying? I was just love this music. But seeing that I've, I was from Brixton, which is a predominantly West Indian area, I just never experienced that mixture of people before, especially just at the vibe. Ecstasy was just like, you know, it was just flowing and just the love, everyone was, they were hugging each other and it was just like a lovely vibe and a lovely atmosphere. And it's something that I'd never forget and it's something that just took me straight away. I just loved it and it just became like part of my life, you know? When I first started playing at Acid House parties, you know, I, you know, it was all fun and games. Me, Brian, playing the car wash every weekend with Fabio and Groove Rider. And um, we wasn't really getting much money at that point. I started playing the head at the fridge and I, and I joined um, Dynamix, Eddie Richards' agency. Obviously, it started becoming a business by then. Promoters started noticing me. I got a call from a guy called Tony Consonator to come and play at Sunrise. First time I went, they started at six in the morning. And I went and I was, um, I came on after Frankie Bones. And I remember my hand trembling like this, man. Do you know what I mean? I was just gonna put the record in and I was trembling like that. Do you know what I mean? But that buzz, that buzz that I felt, do you know what I mean? It will always, it will always stay with me, mate. Always, forever. That, that little vibe I felt. That first, first putting the record on and just getting that vibe from the people. It's something that will always live with me, man. It was deep. I think at around about that point, I started taking it really serious as a business and knowing what, what DJs are worth. Do you know what I mean? Because you can't be out like working all these all this hours for nothing and people exploiting you, which some people will try to do. But you just got to make sure that, you know, you stand your ground and um, treat it as a business because that's what it is as well. As much as we love it, as much as the music, the, the passion for the music is undiminished, it's un, it never fades. But it's a business as well, you know what I'm saying? And you have to respect that. Me and Brian G started the label in um, 1992, and we've always just gone off our gut instinct. Firstly, Brian G is an absolutely brilliant A&R man. Do you know what I mean? He, he, could, he could dig a tune out of a, out of a, out of a haystack that geezer, do you know what I mean? And we've always just maintained our, our judgment and just always trusted our judgment in what is right for us what's right for V or what's right for Philly as a label and we've always trusted that you know regardless of what the trend is or whatever we as far as we're concerned you don't tell us what the trend is we tell you what the trend is or we tell you what we think the next trend will be and we release records accordingly according to that I remember once I've signed function by Ed Rush and Optical in Music House. You know what I mean? Ed was like, oh, I've got this, this little different thing. And I heard it, I was like, that's a V record. I just knew straight away. Didn't need any fucking rewinds or anything. I just knew straight away. And that's the kind of, we've always kind of gone with our gut with records, you know what I'm saying? And that's, that's, that's always been our policy, do you know what I mean? Like, there's been loads of records that have been popular with people and stuff like that. But we've always maintained our, our sound and our, our thing towards music, do you know what I mean? And I think that's what's made the label so successful and made it um, still be here after all these years. Ooh. 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 
Lily Mazella, make me work it. It's just everyone knows it, do you know what I mean? And that was the hook of the record. The main samples from a record from called Mademoiselle by Foxy. It's like a famous rare groove record. I used to always hear it at Soul to Soul at the Africa Centre. And it's just like one of the most classic, most famous rare groove records ever. What happened at the time, at the time I've been, I got arrested. I got arrested for possession of firearms. I was, I was a kid and I was, I was a bit silly. And um, I don't know, when you get arrested for something like that, your head goes over time because you're thinking, oh my God, I'm gonna go to prison. Right, 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 right. So I needed something to kind of occupy my mind. So I called my pal Dillinger, I'm like, listen, I need to get to the studio. You know, just anything to occupy my mind. So I just went in, I took a couple of my favorite records in there and bang, 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 bang. Leviticus the Burial was born, do you know what I mean? It's as simple as that. We've done it in about five hours. <laughs> We went to Roller Express, to Finbar's studio, where Optical was working, and he, he recorded the B-side, with my sister singing, first you say yeah, then you say no, and um, that was it. It's a rap, boom, do you know what I mean? The rest is history. <laughs> Wednesday, 9 to 11, right here at MySoul.com and MySoul DAB, baby boy. Brand new track, The One Go, and my boy Robert Blake, Fly Away. I'm kind of liking that one right now. My love for the radio goes way back to when I first started. Do you know what I mean? I first started on a pirate station about 10 minutes from here in Brixton called Passion Radio. And that's, it's the right name for it, Passion, because everyone on that station was passionate about music. Every single DJ. Wednesday night, between 11 and 1, right here at MySoul.com, MySoul DAB, right? I spent eight years at Kiss FM. Won two awards for best radio DJ. Listen, let's get the party started. Jumping Jack Frost on mysoul.com. I left Kiss after eight years because I'd, um, it just got a little bit too corporate over there. And then when when Gordon Mack, the founder of Kiss, came back on my soul, it was a no-brainer really for me to get back into radio. <laughs> Jumping Jack Frost on My Soul Radio. In, in 20, nearly 30 years in the business, there are going to be times when you're, you're, you're tested and your faith is tested and your resilience and your patience and your, your dedication is tested. Do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, there's been, there's been bad times, there's been rough times as well. There were times when the music just got a little bit, I just thought, I don't, I, I, this is not the direction I want to go in, you know what I mean? There's been times I, I, I wanted to give it up. There was a time when I just partied way too much, do you know what I mean? And it kind of affected me, affected my performances and that. And I think I took my eye off the ball. And I did in fact take like about a year out at one point, do you know what I mean? And then um, sorted my head out, sorted myself out, and came out of a vengeance, do you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you need motivated to get up and go still, do you know what I mean? And this music, he does it. You put in a tune, right? You put in a record and you just, the, the power of it and the, the, the enthusiasm and the work that's gone into that record. Do you know what I mean? It's like a beautiful painting, do you know what I mean? Just that in itself, it, that, that, that drives me on every day. I think the proudest achievement I've ever felt in music is watching one of my artists, Ronnie Size, win the Mercury Music Prize. I think that's the proudest proudest moment ever in this business. I've, I think that's, I've never ever felt as proud as I did that night. As New Forms wins Album of the Year. You know, people said we were crazy, but we just believed in what we were doing. That's, yeah, that's definitely, without, without a doubt, the proudest ever moment ever in this, in this, in my 30, nearly 30 years in the business. This isn't, you know, just about me, this is about, you know, this is. <laughs> I was wearing my suit, I was wearing this, I had my cigar, I was like, Mac Daddy Mac, Mac Daddy Jack. <laughs> what keeps me going to carry on what I'm doing is just my love of the music and my dedication. You know, there's always something else that's gonna just make my, the, the, the hairs on my arms stand up, do you know what I mean? And I think that's, that's what keeps me going in this business, do you know what I mean? Just when you think that you've heard it all, or just when you think you've seen it all, something else comes up to top it, and you know what I mean? That's what keeps me going. Joe and bass, it's, it's, it's in my blood. 
To be in the drum bass thing, you've got to live it. You wake up every morning, you live with it. Oh. There's no one person that can say that oh, they created drum and bass or it's something, it's a lifestyle, a love of a, a genre of music. I believe that I'm one of the people that, um, that grew with this music. There's a lot of us, we watched, we, we, we helped it develop, you know what I'm saying? And we all grew together with it. This is Brixton, bro. <laughs> I grew up with drum and bass, and drum and bass grew up with me. Do you know what I mean? Drum and bass, jungles has got that vibe, that 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 injection, that passion. Do you know what I mean? You look at the people out there, the passion they got for it, the love they got for it, the DJs playing, you see the people just in it, the love that they got for it. It's a very, very passionate, powerful genre of music. 